Welcome to Wrong Answers Only. I'm Ann Merchant with the National Academy of Sciences, and I am joined by... I'm Kate Sutter, and I'm with LabX, a program of the National Academy of Sciences. So by way of introduction, it's my responsibility to say that the National Academy of Sciences is a private nonprofit institution in Washington, D.C., not to be confused with the National Science Foundation, because that would be a wrong answer. Although... I guess it's perfectly acceptable to have wrong answers since that's why we're here. In fact, that's often the way that science works, that there's a process of wrong answers and wrong directions to get to the right answers and to get to the right direction. And that's a little bit about how we work at LabX. It absolutely is. LabX, I'm gonna explain it to you a little bit, is a test bed here at the Academy where we get to tinker and experiment with both right and wrong. It's really fun, whether it's video games or mixing the gronies with chemists on YouTube, check it out. Sometimes we get right and sometimes we don't. What I can say is we do have a few, shall we say, experiments coming out over the next few months. Be sure to like and follow our social accounts to get some updates. Um, We have our very own board game coming out later this year, um, as well as a video series with the media firm Upworthy on some really strange studies. I'm looking forward to it. Um, We hope we're right with those, but tonight it's all about being wrong. Um, And before we start the show, I have a few thank yous. I wanna thank the LabX team, Carrie, Rick, Monique, and Anne. You guys are great co-producers and awesome support. And I wanna thank the AV team because without them, we would be staring at dark screens right now all alone. Um, So we really couldn't do without them. And then, Um, I do want to thank everyone on the show. Uh, I hope it's going to be a great time. Um, Also, that being said about the AV team, if there's a moment something doesn't go exactly according to plan, that's okay because that's what the show's about. That's acceptable. It's one one time when something wrong is right. Um, So I cannot think of a better person to start the show off um, than our host for tonight, Chris Duffy. It's all yours, Chris. Take it away. Oh, hi. Thanks so much to uh, Anne and to Kate. And thank you so much for everyone being here and watching the show. I am your host, Chris Duffy, and this is Wrong Answers Only. So on today's show, you and our panel of comedians are going to learn all about exciting research from an incredible scientific expert and also what she is like outside of the lab. So not just her as a scientist, but also her as a person, a human being. And I also want to point out that uh, tonight, This is a comedy show, this is a science show, this is also an interactive show. The beauty of doing this online is that we can actually get you all involved. So we wanna hear your jokes, we wanna hear your questions, and we want you to play these games right along with us. So right below, there is, in the browser where you're watching, that you should have the ability to type comments somewhere down here, where it says Q and A. So you can type questions, you can type your jokes, you can type whatever you're thinking. And also, if you click over to the right of that, Um, or maybe I went the wrong way, to the right of that, it's reversed, so I have a hard time, but uh, to the right on whatever your right is, you will be able to see uh, polls, which is we're going to use those throughout the show to have you play along in the games, Um, and in fact, we're going to throw up a test poll right now, so click over to that and let us see your answer, so there should be a test poll if you click right to the right of where it says Q&A, and here's the secret. If you don't see the test poll, no worries. The show will still work. It'll still be great. No problems. After tonight's show, you're going to receive a post-show email with links to go deeper into our scientists' work and to see more comedy from each of our panelists. Uh, A lot of you, after the first show, said you wanted more. You wanted it to be longer. You wanted to go more in depth. That's great. We're going to do that. And also, after the show, you'll get an email where you can go as deep as you would like. And there will also be a trivia question about black holes, so you'll have to pay attention to what you're learning in today's show. And if you get that question correct, you will join the immortals on the wrong answers only scroll of glory. Those are the folks who get that trivia question right. And here are the folks who got the shark trivia question from last episode correct. Here is this month's scroll of glory. Okay, here's what, who we got. We have Allison Humphreys, we have Karishma, we have Ross, we have Anna, so many people. These are the folks who got it right. Congratulations to all of these people. They are on our scroll of glory. And truly, look at that list. You could join this list. All you have to do is respond to the email tonight with the trivia question and get it correct. That is a prize, by the way, that is actually impossible for you to get anywhere else. It is 
only available here, and that's because it costs so much money. Only this show has the huge budget to put a name on a scroll of glory like that. That's why you don't see it everywhere. Very, very expensive. It's, uh, yeah, it's only the National Academy of Sciences has the kind of budget to do something like that. All right, let's get right into that. <laughs> we can move past the illustrious list. You could be on it next episode. And let's get into tonight's show. So tonight we have an incredible, an incredible panel of comedians who is going who are going to be uh, guessing and playing along with us. We have Josh Gondelman, Emily Heller, and Naomi Perrigan. Here they are. Hello, hi. Hello. Thank you so much to all of you for being here. This is exciting. This thank is you huge. for having us. Yeah, and, thank you uh, for having us. Oh, it, it's absolutely our pleasure. <laughs> and we are, uh, we're gonna have an incredible scientist too. And I don't wanna introduce her. In fact, I wanna let her introduce herself. So here is tonight's expert. For me, it matters like on a personal level in terms of, you know, we're not solving world hunger. Um, it's more kind of like art, you know, when you take something and you think it's inspiring and it's just kind of something that you're very privileged to do where you can spend your days thinking about supermassive black holes merging and it's not gonna affect anyone's everyday life, but like maybe it'll, inspire someone somewhere to you know lift them out of their i don't know internal funk my name is chiara mingarelli i'm a gravitational wave astrophysicist i look for ripples in the fabric of space-time coming from supermassive black hole mergers this is our expert chiara mingarelli she is an incredible astrophysicist she's a black hole expert she studies gravitational waves some of her intro video was sucked into a black hole. It was sucked away through space and time. I already see a question from the audience. Did Chris get eaten by a black hole? The answer is yes. We traveled through time and space and we are back now. Uh, Kiara, thank you so much for being here. Our panelists have, are gonna get a lot of chances to uh, ask you about your work, but let's just get started with their first question. So panelists, what is the question that you've always wanted to ask an astrophysicist or what is the question that you want to ask right now? You each are going to get one. So let's get started with you, Josh. Josh. Oh, what do you want to obvious question. Easy question. Slam dunk. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Do you believe in aliens? Thank you so much for that question, Josh. That is the mm -hmm. number one question that I get asked. It has absolutely nothing <laughs> to do about my work. And every single time <laughs> I talk to the public, um, yes, I believe in aliens. I believe that it would make no sense if the universe had no other intelligent life in it. I don't necessarily believe that they visited the Earth or that they have you know, nefarious practices while abducting humans. Um, but I do think that there's probably even life within our own solar system, maybe on Europa or other moons, um, maybe one of the moons of Jupiter. So I, I think, you know, how complex that life is, we'll hopefully find out within my lifetime. Um, but yeah, I think it would be completely unthinkable for there to not be any other life in the universe. Kira, I also love that you were like, thank you, Josh, for that question. It's the most common question and has yeah. nothing to do with my research. I, I'm, I'm up first. I'm going to ask the first question. When you hit the buffet, right, you don't start with parsley. You start <laughs> with the most appealing item on the buffet that everybody wants. I know. I, I just wish it were about black holes. <laughs> yeah, no, I also love when you go to a buffet platter and there's just a giant uh, steaming dish of parsley. That's one of my favorite things that they serve at buffet. Gross. No, thank you. Uh, I, it's been a long time since I've been to a buffet. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad for all of us that you haven't been recently. Naomi, yeah, what question would you like to ask Kiara? Well, how accurate is the sound guard in Black Hole Sun video? How accurate is the sound guard? <laughs> Soundgarden. Now that was a band. This is the '90s. They had a music video called "Black Hole yes. Sun." Yes, and won't in the you come and, and yes, wash sister. away the rain? Yes. So black you know, sun. yeah, yeah. Is it you know is is the black hole really just going to take everything and just clean it out? Well, that is an excellent question. No, me. it's not. Kiara. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, so that's an excellent question. Okay. <laughs> it is. And I just, you know, sorry, Josh. That is an excellent question. Um, black holes, one of the really common misconceptions is that they're like cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything. 
Uh, but in fact, black holes don't suck anything at all. Like if the sun were to turn, in, to turn into a black hole the next day, imagine a black hole sun. Yes. Uh, nothing would change in the orbits of the planets and the solar system. The only thing that's really, you know, unique about black holes is the fact that they are, you know, they can typically be very massive, um, that their escape velocity is equal to the speed of light. So inside the black hole, the light might be coming up like light, but like from a water fountain and then falling back in on itself. Like the light can't escape. It gets close to the event horizon and then falls back down. Right. So that's why black holes are black because it just curves all of space time around it. And then the light can't escape the sphere called the event horizon. Um, so it looks black, but apart from that, it's just like a massive thing that's in space. <laughs> We're gonna, actually, we're gonna, I, I want to ask you a question about that in just a second, because I, I, a lot of the questions in the chat that we're getting from the audience are, are very related to that. But before we do that, let's let Emily ask her question, and then we'll uh, go to some of these audience ones. Yeah, I, I was going to ask a question about existentialism, but instead, I feel like <laughs> at this point in the conversation, I need to ask, what is a black hole? <laughs> Great question. That That's a good question. Many of the questions in the chat are, what is a black hole? Can you explain it to me like I'm two? Can you explain it to me like I'm a, I'm a child? What is a black hole? Because up until your previous answer, uh, I thought it was a big vacuum. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So a black hole is this really, you know, uh, well, okay. It's the result. There's, there's two kinds of main black holes. There's supermassive black holes and stellar mass black holes. So let's stick with the ones that are like the sun. So at the end of a star's life, if it's more than 20 times the mass of the sun, at the end of its life, the nuclear fusion happening in the core that's causing this pressure outwards can no longer counteract the, for counteract the force of gravity that's pushing in, right? So the star is really massive and it's always trying to collapse in on itself. And in the core, there's all of these nuclear bombs going off, right? It's nuclear fusion happening in the center. So you've got I pressure find this going very out. very relatable so far. Pressure <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. like going in, yeah. pressure going collapsing. out, right? Yeah, collapsing on itself, yeah. And then at the end of its life, um, the, there's iron in the center. And that, can't, that can't keep exploding and, and fusing and, and releasing energy. And in fact, it sucks in energy. And so then that sucks in energy and then all the layers of the star just come crashing down in on itself and it crushes material. And we actually don't have like a physical description of what the inside of a black hole is. We call it a singularity. It's the point of infinite curvature of space time. But like it actually in reality is probably like a ball of stuff that we just don't have the science to describe. So we call it a singularity because that's an easier way to think about it. Um, I feel like also if you're, if you're a, a scientist and you're applying for grants and you say, it's a ball of stuff that I don't understand, people are like, your grant is not approved. But if you say it's a singularity, <laughs> they're like, yes, here's the money. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. I'm, I got an email from one of the National Science Foundation grants officers saying like to another grants officer that I was going to be on this show and he should tune in. And I think that they're currently <laughs> deciding whether or not to fund one of my grants. And this is not a joke. <laughs> so. Okay, I'd like to change my question to why do you think you deserve that grant? <laughs> <laughs> what if I what? Sorry, Emily, what is that? Uh, why do you think you deserve that grant? I'm just well, I deserve to that grant. the softball at you. So yes, yes. yes. Thank, well, thank you very much for asking this question. The next three I, years are going to be crucial for nanohertz gravitational waves. I've been and saying it for years. I've been yeah, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Crucial. Yeah. Crucial. Right? <laughs> right? Absolutely critical. And the work that I'm doing cannot be done by anyone else in the universe. No one else. Wait a minute. Wait, you said that. that you think there's intelligent life somewhere else out of space. <laughs> It was literally the first thing you said. And you don't think anyone else in the universe can do this work? No. Okay. I have <laughs> Sorry, grant committee. Set. I have a unique skill set. It's impossible for anyone else ever <laughs> to do this work. I need to do it now. I need the money now. I have the students now. We do. Liam Neeson of black holes. Yes, I was going to say scientifically of Neeson. Correct, Emily. 
That's what you say. That's the first line of every grant. I think that the grants offices are probably peeing their pants right now. <laughs> Good. 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 Yeah, we'll keep them on edge. Hear and enjoy. Uh, and we're, we're, it's time for us to move uh, move into our first game. But I also just want to, before we we totally move on, I wanted to say the uh, the world where you have to uh, interview and have a job panel that is uh, Emily, Naomi, and Josh <laughs> for your scientific grant is the world that I want to live in, and I'm glad that we live in it for this moment. Uh, okay, we're going to go into our first game, which is called In Space. No one can hear you sing. And I, it, this is proof that this show is not, we don't give the script to the comedians ahead of time because uh, we have already touched on some of the, uh, of the bits that we're gonna talk about in this game. So here's how this game works. I'm gonna give you panelists a part of a song lyric that references space or black holes. You have to finish the lyric and then Kiara is gonna tell us how scientifically accurate that song really is. So. Let's imagine that Kiara was a bird expert. If she was an ornithologist, I might give one of you the classic Nelly Furtado lyrics, I'm like a bird, I only, and what would you say? Fly away. fly away. I only fly away, that's correct. And then we would go to our bird scientist who would explain that birds actually have quite a developed homing instinct. And why would they even bother building nests if they only flew away? It doesn't make any sense. Sorry, Nelly Furtado. They don't. Homing pigeons, they don't only fly away, they also fly home. Okay, get it? Great. Let's move into this one. Naomi, this first one is for you. It is just like you were referencing the Soundgarden classic, Black Hole Sun, Won't You Come, and what happens next? You know, we know you know. Take away the pain. Okay, wash away the rain, take away the pain. Can a black hole, Kiara, can a black hole be a sun? It sounds like you said yes. Um, a sun can be a black hole, but a black hole can't be a sun. Okay, it's a square and rectangle situation. And uh, then can a black hole wash away the rain? Can it take away the pain? A black hole will probably give you a lot of pain and probably won't take away the pain. So if you're getting close to a stellar mass black hole, your feet are going to experience a stronger force of gravity than your head and your body gets spaghettified. This will probably be quite painful. Mm -hmm. um, however, a super massive Just in time hole. for bathing suit season. <laughs> <laughs> in a super massive black hole, that spaghettification happens <laughs> inside the event horizon. So you could actually go into a super massive black hole, like by accident, like stumble into it and not realize that you'd crossed this point of no return, the event horizon, and then get spaghettified inside where no one's looking. Okay, I'm I have two spending questions. all of quarantine spaghettifying my body. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you say, when you said, uh, Mat ball of stuff inside. I'm now just picturing uh, what some scientists would call a spicy meat ball. Is that accurate <laughs> or no? It, it's. I think so. I mean, <laughs> who knows? No, we, we certainly don't know. I'm definitely not going to say no. It could very well be okay. a spicy meat ball. Uh, your, your Italian family is just horrified I, right I now. I know. They're, they're watching like, what did they're you like, say? It's a polpettone. It's not a <laughs> Yeah, Wait, did you just call me Disappointment Tony? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, I have two questions for you, One is, is spaghettification a uh, technical term, or is that yes. kind of one that you're using? Okay. And, and second, uh, someone in the chat is asking, and I actually think it's a, a very worthwhile question, what is... What does it mean to be massive? So what is super massive? How do you define it? Is there a, an easy way for us Very to understand question. that? Yes. So um, they're just definitions. So a super massive black hole is about a million times the mass of the sun or greater. Okay. Um, and wow. a stellar mass black hole is like between like one and a hundred times the mass of the sun. And then in the middle, you have intermediate mass black holes. <laughs> intermediate mass, you know, that's those are the ones they don't get a lot of attention, but they're the ones that do the real work in the industry. Uh, it's worth also noting, I want to say before we move on from this Soundgarden song, that uh, when Chris Cornell, the songwriter, when he was asked what the meaning of this phrase was, uh, Black Hole Sun, Won't You Come and Wash Away the Rain? When he was asked what the meaning of that was, his direct response was, and this is a quote, well, it's just some words. So I think <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't trying to find big meaning here. Wow. Okay, Emily, this one's for you. 
We got some Pink Floyd for you. Remember when we, you remember when you were young, you shone like the sun. Shine on, you crazy diamond. Now there's a look in your eyes, like. What Am do you I think? allowed to Google it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a look in your eyes, uh, like a big pizza pie. That's a more. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually correct. Incredible. No, no, it was like black hole in the sky. <laughs> Uh, I should have been able to figure that out. Like black holes in the sky. Kiara, what would it mean for someone to have a look in their eyes like black holes in the sky? It, I think my interpretation of that would be like it would be really beautiful because you'd have the black hole like your iris and an accretion disk around it, right? And I think it would actually look pretty amazing. Like Gargantua and Interstellar, like the, the supermassive black hole in Interstellar, there's like the accretion disk around it, and then there's the little eyebrow on top from the gravitational lensing effect. Now, in accretion disk, are those colored? Like, are, like, would that be like the brown or the blue or the... So your, your black hole has like a disk of stuff around it, right? And that stuff you can actually see. Like, that's hot material that's you know, emitting light. And so that's one of the ways that you can actually look at black holes is that you can actually like see the stuff surrounding it being accreted by it. Accreted? Yeah, like being eaten. Eaten, oh. thank you, thank you. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need two dollar words. Food heavy oh yeah, good call, yeah. Emily. <laughs> One of the questions in the chat is, um, could the sun turn into a black hole? Now, I'm not sure, but I believe the answer is not only can it, it will, right, Kiara? Unfortunately, our sun is not massive enough to become a black hole. Our sun's gonna become a red giant and then will eventually become a white dwarf star. So a white dwarf is like this big ball of carbon and oxygen. Uh, and it's under so much pressure that it's essentially a massive diamond. Wow. Um, our sun is not massive enough is also what I heard my father tell my mother when I was trying out for the varsity basketball team. <laughs> they were very worried for me. <laughs> I also love it to end on this, to, to finish this Pink Floyd lyric, the fact that it literally is a gonna become a diamond, shine on you crazy diamond. That, that's actually a scientific lyric there. Um, Okay, last one. Josh, this one's for you. This is a, a U2 lyric. At okay. the moment of surrender, I folded to my knees. I did not notice the passersby, and they did not notice me. I've been in... What does Bono sing a, next? I've been in... A black hole. <laughs> not just a black hole. Bono says, I've been in every black hole. That's Africa. <laughs> That's what he says about Africa, and I don't like it. I don't like that language. I don't like it from Bono. He's... I know that's not, it's not acceptable. He's been in every iPhone. We all know that. that, there was that album. <laughs> I've been in every black hole. First of all, is a, what a bold claim. One of the people in the chat already asked Kiara, how many black holes are there? Do we even know? That's such a good question. That's a great question. We estimate that in the Milky Way, there's about a million stellar mass black holes. And we know that in the center of the Milky Way, there is a supermassive black hole that's about 4 million times the mass of the sun. So yeah, Bono okay. should really go get checked out. <laughs> <laughs> Bono's body may be heavily spaghettified is what we're learning. <laughs> heavily, heavily, heavily spaghettified. Uh, we are, uh, we're getting a lot of uh, questions about um, like the, some, one question I think was almost certainly written by a man who is currently hitting a bong, which is, can there be a black hole inside of a black hole? <laughs> wow. Yes. I don't see yeah. why not. Cool. I mean, if you had some, there's even a, a theory that black, supermassive black holes can contain universes inside of them. But like well, the laws of physics are the laws of physics. If, I mean, so in a stellar mass black hole, they're small. And so everything happening inside is like really violent and concentrated. But like a supermassive black hole is pretty fluffy. There's like a lot of volume. Um, and so if you have like a quiet part inside, I mean, it might be difficult. 
I mean, no one really knows what happens inside, right? But if you've got a place where the gas can cool enough inside the event horizon, then there's no reason that that I know of why it couldn't undergo some kind of gravitational collapse and then form another black hole. But then that would join with the singularity on the inside and it would increase, you know, I mean, and, and it would just... Kiara, Kiara, you just keep saying movie titles and I'm not <laughs> fooled. I will not be fooled. If you say Event Horizon, Singularity, one more time. I'm on to you, miss. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of collide and crest where the gravitational fields come together in what we'd call, scientists call it Dante's Peak. <laughs> 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 And at that point, it's Jumanji, as far as the eye can see. Uh, Kiara, <laughs> I feel like now, as Josh just so eloquently explained, I, I feel yeah. like we have a conceptual <laughs> understanding of what a black hole is. I think we kind of get it. Um, but I'm not personally, I don't really have like a mental image of what a black hole is besides just like a black circle. So what what does a black hole actually look like? Like, what does a black hole look like if we're looking at it? Nothing. It's black. If, if there's no, if there's no material around your black hole, it's just like a black sphere against black space. The only way you can see it if there's nothing around it is by noticing that the light gets bent around it. And so behind it, you might be able to see like a ring of light and like all of the images behind it are all lensed in a very strange way. If you're lucky, then maybe the black hole has a star orbiting it. And maybe some of the material from the star is getting, you know, gravitationally attracted to the black hole. And then maybe there's gas. And so that can form, you know, a disk of material around it. So it would look maybe a little bit like Saturn, where you have like the planet and a ring. Instead, you have like a black hole with a ring. That's the accretion disk. That's where it takes the material that it eats um, from. And then you can see things like hot x-rays and, and gas that, those emit light and then you can sort of that will light up the black hole and do they have a, a, a shape inside even if we can't see it black holes well so black holes can be um kind of compressed at the top and the bottom because there's they can be spinning really fast and so they can get squished kind of like the earth is a little bit squished too on the top and the bottom and the middle bulges out a little bit okay great that is, that's clear. Now let's, uh, let's just make sure that we all are on the same page. And we're going to do that in our second game, which we call PhD, pretty hard to draw. So uh, <laughs> this segment, panelists, you're each going to do your best to draw a black hole based on Kiara's uh, description. And then Kiara's going to critique them and say who she thinks is best. So panelists, <laughs> you can get started drawing now and you have one minute starting right now. And while our panelists are drawing, Kiara, let me ask you a little bit more. Um, so a lot of people, someone is saying, my head is about to explode trying to understand black holes. I can assure you, you are not the only one. Um, uh, one question that someone had is um, about wormholes. Now, are wormholes, is that another name for black holes? Are those uh, a theoretical concept? And could you use a black hole or a wormhole to travel long distances? These are all the questions that are, that are coming in around that. Um, so pick that apart however you'd like. Sure. I mean, so so wormholes are really interesting. Wormholes enable you to travel uh, long distances in the relatively, well, almost instantly. So I'm going to do the classic example. I just got a piece of paper. Um, on one side, I have uh, astrobytes, pop talks, and then like notes for my first year physics students. Okay. Um, but so imagine that we're separated by two points like yep. this, right? And then we have to travel along the whole surface of this paper to get from one point to the next. A wormhole would join those two points. So instead of traveling all the way around, you could just go right through and get from one point to the other. It's kind of like tunneling through a mountain, huh. right? You don't have to go like up the mountain and then down the other side. You can just go right through. But instead of like physically moving through a tunnel, you're just already on the other side. And is so that conceptual really interesting or do we know idea. that exists? Is that conceptual or do we know that that actually exists? It could exist. Uh, the, the difficult part about wormholes is that you need negative energy to keep them open. Uh, so you could, you know, have a wormhole open. And I believe that the original ideas only really allow for something like an electron to travel through. So not like a human being. 
Um, and so, but, but it, they're really unstable. They want to immediately collapse. And the only way to keep them open is with negative energy. Uh, and you need negative mass. And that just doesn't exist. So, um, you know, the jury's still out. But some, some of the early proponents of wormholes, like Kip Thorne, who won the Nobel Prize or shared the Nobel Prize for physics in 2017, was once, you know, very gung-ho about wormholes and is now a little bit more conservative um, because, you know, it's just, it just doesn't look great for wormholes right now. But maybe we're at the edge of a paradigm shift. Maybe our understanding of physics is totally incomplete. And, you know, with our new understanding, we might get to wormholes. One thing that I really love about your research is that you are you know, you're finding real things and you're, you're analyzing things that we know about, but there's also so much that we don't know that like could be discovered. And it seems like we're at the edge of understanding a lot of really incredible new stuff, which is really exciting. Um, okay, let's look at our panel. Let's look at our panelist drawings and see, uh, uh, let's have people hold them up and uh, Kiara. Well, wait, Chris, I just want to say, I feel like that person on Final Jeopardy who knows they don't have the answer. Cause I finished <laughs> real early and then Emily and Josh are still drawing. And I was like, um, okay, what is time? <laughs> what is happy birthday, mom? <laughs> All right, so let's let's hold them up and let's take a look at these. Uh, we're gonna they're gonna be a little small, but hopefully we can see them well. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, I want to point out that she said that they could be fluffy, and so I did. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Emily, will you will, will you you explain to us what you drew? Kind of walk us through. Emily, will you start? Walk us through what you drew. Yeah, so I remember she said that black holes can be kind of fluffy, and that made me think of Gabriel Iglesias, the comedian who goes by Fluffy Guy. And so I just drew Gabriel Iglesias because I realized I wasn't going to be able to properly <laughs> demonstrate what a black hole looked like. That's a very good picture of Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah, Thank you. And it's also a very creative interpretation. I really like it. <laughs> Thank you. It also shows that you were listening. Supermassive black hole. <laughs> listening and understanding every word. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, why don't you walk us through yours? Well, it's a it's black and it's a hole. And a hole <laughs> it's very simple. And then around the end, though, that are those are objects that are being spaghettified into it. Do you see what I'm saying? So spaghettification is occurring all around it, and these are just like little bits, little bits trying to live. So this is a very nice two dimensional cut of a three dimensional object. So I really like the way that you projected the black hole onto that surface. That's really nicely done. You and I also you... like the fact that it's, you know, an oblate spheroid um, because it's spinning so fast. Mm -hmm. It's bulging out on the sides. And so the thought... holes are really squished. So that's a, a really nice uh, effect that you embodied in your really nice picture. Certainly Thank we watched so much. We would have all described that as an oblate spheroid. spheroid. So I, I, I actually, I, that's the, when you were describing Earth being kind of smushed, I almost smugly was like, hmm, that's an oblate spheroid. Because that's the only <laughs> space thing I know. <laughs> Josh, I love that you, I would have loved if you'd said it. And I wish you had. In the future, yeah, please don't hold back. The fact right. that you didn't means that I don't believe you now. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. You're right. There's no, I have no credibility. I, I like started off the whole show by being like, space, is it big? <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, Josh, why don't you show us what you draw and what you drew and, and walk us There's through. There's a lot going on here. So in the middle, there's my oblate spheroid, right? And it's got its yummy accretion disc wow. kind of mm -hmm. around it, you can see. Delicious. And then there's um, there's a star kind of okay. that, that you described before. Then in the middle, that's where the scale? stuff... Is it to scale? No, 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 How do no. I understand. Okay. How do you understand this? Uh, it's, the star is pretty far away, <laughs> so that's why it looks small. <laughs> um, in the middle, that's the stuff slash meet the ball uh, that we discussed earlier. I think, I and think then, we decided to call it a polpettone <laughs> for my Italian. <laughs> I think that we. And then. Josh, described, Josh decided to describe it as a meat dash a dash ball. <laughs> That's the, the, the transliteration, the Jewish transliteration. And then um, and then this is Spaghetti Bono. You can tell that it's Bono, even though he's been fully spaghettified, because baby, those sunglasses are still there. <laughs> Beautiful. I really like how Bono is feeding the accretion disc. 
I think oh, that yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. really that's a very you know accurate way because what happens is that as Bono is getting spaghettified, then his mm-hmm. material will feed the black hole, the accretion he disk, join cool. the accretion disk. So okay, that's well, actually that's very nice. Well, Thank we you. do need to pick a winner on this one. So uh, not only are you going to pick who you think did the best job at drawing the black hole, Kiara, but also the audience is going to pick their favorite. So audience in the chat, um, next to the chat, there's a poll. Tell us which one you liked the most. And Kiara, which one do you think was the most scientifically accurate drawing of a black hole? Was it Gabriel Iglesias? Was it what someone in the chat described as the coronavirus? Or was it Josh Gondelman drawing of Bono to scale next to a black hole? (laughs) <laughs> well, given that black holes um, can be totally defined by their mass, their spin, and their charge, they're really simple objects. I think that Naomi nailed it. Mm. Oh, Naomi! Oh! You won that one. And what about the audience pick? That was the expert pick. Who did the audience tell? Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to tally those up, and I will uh, let you know at the end of the show who the audience voted for as their favorite in there. Um, but you can still, still time for you to answer in the poll. Oh, we got the results. It was Josh. Josh, you won the audience pick there. And uh, Thank you. it seems as though one or many of the people in the chat are members of you too. So that was slightly rigged. <laughs> <laughs> This, to me, is a beautiful day, and I won't let it get away. (laughs) Beautiful. Okay. In our next segment, we're going to take one of those lucky audience members on screen to be face-to-face with Kiara. Now, this audience member can ask whatever they want about astrophysics, but in exchange, they are going to have to answer a question from our comedians. And that question might be about astrophysics. It might be about them. We have no idea what it will be. Today, our lucky audience member is... Aaron Vaz, he is the brother of someone who got the trivia question correct and was on this month's Scroll of Glory. We offered them the opportunity to be the Q&A and Q person, and they said, no, my brother will do better. So this is Q&A and Q. Here we go. Q&A and Q. Aaron, you, welcome to the show, Aaron. You are a project manager and a landscape photographer in Toronto, Canada. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So Aaron, you are going to get to ask Kiara a question, but there is a catch. You're going to have to answer one as well. Are you, uh, are you okay with that? That is totally fine. Things. Great. Let's do okay. it. <laughs> Aaron, ask away. Wait, Aaron, I'm from Ottawa. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> this so is the close. most Canadian <laughs> greeting between the two of you. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very Canadian. All right. So uh, my question is, uh, recently there was a photo of a black hole that was taken the first one ever. Uh, it was using the Event Horizon Telescope. Uh, I know you said that there was there was a black hole in the middle of the core of the Milky Way. Uh, can that telescope take a photo of the black hole in the core of the Milky Way? That's a great question. Uh, it can. Um, so the Event Horizon Telescope is, is amazing. It ties together uh, radio telescopes from all over the planet and makes like the whole planet into a camera that can take these, these pictures of black holes. So you're right, it took a picture of, um, <clears throat> of a nearby supermassive black hole. It tried really, really hard to get a picture of our own supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star, which is at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The problem there is that there's a lot of space weather. Uh, And so it's actually the conditions for taking these pictures um, were never perfect. And so, you know, my colleagues are still really trying really, really hard to get that picture of Sagittarius A star but it's proving to be uh, quite challenging. Amazing, great Thank answer. You. Thank you so much, uh, Kiara. And now uh, panelists, uh, between yourselves, you can ask one question total, not each. So uh, okay. why don't you all t- discuss and agree on a question that you wanna ask Aaron. Now, that could be a question about project management. It could be a question about landscape photography. It could be a question about Toronto. It could be a question about anything at all. There's no bounds. Uh, what do you wanna ask Aaron? I think we should ask him what the juiciest gossip from his high school was. I love it. I was honestly going to say whatever Emily wants. So this works <laughs> I lo- out. I very think that's well. a great question. Yeah, <laughs> it's a perfect honestly- question. <laughs> I would also like to know the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The question is, what's the juiciest <laughs> gossip from your high school? 
from when you were there. You don't have to tell us like what today's teens are doing. Unless it's juicier than the um, stuff. That unless it's when yeah. You're unless right, it's like right. really good. Default to the juiciest, and if you can't think of anything from high school, I will accept college. Our high school was really sad. It wasn't like the. <laughs> The, the, the biggest thing that happened was we were the first high school in Toronto to have a police officer stationed at school to make sure there was no shenanigans happening. But we were a soft school. So it was kind of like a fail. Soft? What does it yeah. mean to be a soft school? Aaron? So we weren't we weren't the ones with the gun violence or, you know, like kids getting stabbed or fights or anything like that. We were just a regular Catholic school in Toronto. And uh and the, we were the for the pilot program. They they put a cop there, and we're like, okay, nothing you're happens here. You went to a Catholic school with no gossip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, we gotta call your people must have been gossiping brother. about you so hard <laughs> and never possible. telling you a word. Okay, no I mean, gossip. it's possible. No gossip about the teachers, the nuns, like. No, there were no nuns. So the thing is, our school oh, wasn't a regular sure. school. It was a self-directed and... learning school. Oh my god. Aaron. So we, yeah. Wait, so you went somewhere else to be homeschooled? <laughs> <laughs> we had homeroom. <laughs> okay. But pretty much. You go to school, you just like you you study at your own pace and like if you have a question, you go ask the teacher. That's pretty there, much it. So everyone just anyone, hanging out most of the time. Is there anyone Aaron. else in your house who you can ask for gossip? <laughs> Does anybody Aaron. have gossip? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, you did a great job. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, that was all the time we have for from you. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Aaron. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chris. We were ready to hold his feet to the fire. I know yeah. that you were, and yet we had to move right along. We learned that Aaron was, in fact, himself a black hole for gossip. I, I want to say, I, I don't believe that it was going to get any better than him leaning back in his chair and kind of <laughs> frustratedly saying, "Does anyone have any gossip?" I would love to be the other person in the house who heard that. Um, that's incredible. Uh, also, you know, uh, what, what juicier gossip could there be than the militarization of our Canadian schools? Uh, okay, <laughs> let's, let's move right along. Uh, Kiara, we have heard uh, a lot about your research, but I want us to find out a little bit more about you as a person because scientists are not some sort of fact-checking robots. They're humans who have passions and interests and backgrounds that lead them to their research. So in our next game, we are going to find out more about you. And this game is called what hasn't she done? Okay, so <laughs> oh, God. what hasn't she done? In this game, panelists, I'm going to give you a list of facts. All of these facts are true except for one. Only one fact is not true about Kiara. Which of these facts is it? Okay, let's bring them up now. Kiara was the managing editor of Il Postino, a Canadian Italian newspaper. She worked for the Edinburgh City Council. She cleaned toilets at a youth hostel. She was a receptionist at the Halifax Bank of Nova Scotia. She had dinner with Jeff Bezos and she had her first kiss in a hedge maze. Okay, which of those is not true? All of those are true except for one. Uh, so panelists, what do you think? And we can bring that back up if you'd like to see those again. Uh, which of those discussions- Do we have to ones, reach a consensus as a panel? Well, I want you to talk it out together, but then yes. we're gonna get to each of you. Okay, mm -hmm. so my first thought was like, okay, Bezos seems unlikely. Maybe she put that there to make it easy for us to guess, or maybe it's true because it's so outlandish. It's why true. On the list? Mm -hmm. He loves that. He loves that show, The Expanse. Okay, he's the one who oh. kept that show, The Expanse, on Amazon. He's obsessed with space. Oh, so okay. I believe okay. he did. He's like Kiara. Let's hang out because I want to talk about space. So yeah. I think that's real. Okay. I think it's one of the location ones because yeah. they're all over the place. There's really? Edinburgh City Council. There's yeah. Halifax, Nova Scotia. Yeah, we're yeah. we're we're all over there's the a, place. With there's these a hedge things. maze. Yeah, I think maybe, a hedge maze. maybe maybe she got to a different base in the hedge maze, <laughs> and that's why. <the> <laughs> I think it, I think it's the toilets. Okay, because Kiara is giving me class, elegance, grace, and I just like can't imagine. You know, she's coming through with a scrub brush. I don't see it <laughs> for her. You know. Mm. That's what all I'm right. Say. Well, let's let's find out. Each one of you, uh, Emily, which one do you think is the lie? Let's bring those up again so you can pick off this list. Which one do you think is the lie? I need to see the list. Yeah, let's bring that list back up. Oh, well, now you know. Oh, I was gonna say hedge maze. <laughs> All right, 
the the thing that is uh, is incorrect was it was all of those are true except she did oh. not have her first kiss in a hedge maze. This is not true. That was actually a plot point from the Netflix show Bridgerton. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yep, I remember Bridgerton that. Bridgerton went off the rails. Like it started out really well and then off the rails. Yara, I, of all the things you said that are controversial, that is the most dangerous one. I cannot allow you to say that. So. <laughs> What, you did him a ton of jobs. You worked for Il Postino, which to me sounds like a complete lie. That's a, a Canadian Italian newspaper. You're the managing editor of a newspaper and then also cleaning toilets and working at the Edinburgh City Council. Yes, I m answered a lot of um, hate mail at, directed to the city council about a documentary about pigeons called Life of Grime. People were very <laughs> upset about the treatment of pigeons in Edinburgh. Um, and I should also say that it was the Halifax Bank of Scotland, not the Halifax Bank of Nova Scotia. But I was very oh. um, and I was terrible at that job. People would come down and be like, "Who am I meeting?" I was like, "I don't know. They're meeting you. Don't you know what they want?" Like? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the, yeah, not. not but were me. you working on like Were you working on astrophysics on the side, like kind of like a like a goodwill hunting situation or like just... like uber for astrophysics <laughs> like you do a little bit of it for people on demand well so it was between my undergraduate degree and my master's degree and um my younger sister Giovanna and i um decided to live in scotland for a while like i was saturated i just graduated um with a double honors in math and physics and was like i know that deep down I love black holes, but right now I hate school. So I just <laughs> needed to take some time off. Um, and so after touring around um, with our older sister, Aniviana, Giovanna and I went to Scotland to like hang out. And so we of course spent all of our money and had like maybe 20 pounds to our name. And we thought that that was okay because someone told us, we, we can't remember who, that like you could live and work in a hostel for, and like stay there for free. So we showed up in Edinburgh with like 20 pounds and went to hostels and we're like, can't we just stay here? And <laughs> Was like, the person leave? who told you that Jeff Bezos? Because you should not <laughs> listen to him about how much stuff costs. <laughs> he doesn't know anymore. <laughs> or was it Eli Roth, director of the film Hostel? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, we uh, we found a place that took us. It was quite, you know, serendipitous. And uh, and I cleaned toilets and I changed uh, sheets and and uh, it was disgusting. And uh, and I did it. I did it for well over a month. Um, and I I clean my own toilet to this day. But Naomi, thank you for the vote of confidence. Uh, I mean, I just like I, know I you're like an Italian okay, queen. I guess. You're an Italian queen. And also, does anyone else want to watch the TV show of Chiara and her sisters? I just yes. love this idea of these three Italian gals traipsing around. Well, you're in a in big Scotland. family, right? Chiara, you have, how many siblings do you have? I have six siblings. I have three brothers and three sisters. And my dad is blowing up the family WhatsApp group right now, sending screenshots <laughs> <laughs> of everything with my face frozen in various contortions. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sending it to the whole family. You, you, had, you had a family appear. that was so big, you, weren't, you were not a minivan family. You were just a van family. It was a van van, <laughs> the blue van. It was a, a big soup. blue van. I learned how a to super drive. massive van. <laughs> it was a super massive van. Yes. Um, okay. Well, before we move on from this, uh, we just you need to know. We don't need to know all the details. But you didn't have your first kiss in a hedge maze. Where did you have your first kiss? <laughs> it was. This is really funny. So you talked to him, my best friend, Patrice uh, Timbers, um, and he cried afterwards. So he was like, friend. I wish this were in a hedge maze. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, that was probably more his speed. Yeah. I think Wait, he Chris, probably did wish that. Chris, oh, are no. you not going to ask any questions about Jeff Bezos? We're just going <laughs> to. No, no, no. Actually, this show is sponsored by Amazon, so we're not allowed to ask any follow-up <laughs> questions about Jeff Bezos. Well, no, I'm joking. Of course we need to know. And yes. uh, I do also want to say, Kiara, fascinating that all I asked you about the first kiss was where did it happen? And you told me that your partner <laughs> cried instead. So I still didn't know where it happened.
On the golf course. Golf course. Mm. Love golf the course. course. I'm on a golf course. Opposite of a hedge maze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we, Kiara, lived, we live next to a golf course. We lived on Clubhouse Drive. Patrice lived on Fairway. And the other street was called Eagle. Incredible. Incredible facts. <laughs> uh, Emily, uh, I feel like knowing that you grew up basically next to a golf course makes it slightly less surprising that she had dinner with Jeff Bezos. But it had nothing uh, to do with that. So, uh, no, so there's this thing called Amazon Mars. And, okay. um, and it's basically like if there were a super geek who had all the money in the world and decided to throw a party, what would that party be like? And it's basically like this three day amazing conference where people give you like the best TED talks you've ever heard. And then everyone gets to play with gadgets and toys and like, and it's awesome. So he invited me to one of these and we had dinner together one night with um, other people. Um, I mean, it wasn't just him and I, like there were I think six people at our table, but it was, it was great. It was super fun. And it's called- Okay, you yeah. need a grant from him. You need to be like, hi, Jeff, I need a grant. Okay, <laughs> yes. that's the rule. He <laughs> owes you something I've decided. Actually, after Amazon Web Services did, did give us some money to help with gravitational wave searches. So Perfect. we're very grateful to Amazon Web Services. I'm very grateful to Amazon. Thank you, thank you. We are all grateful to Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Amazon. Okay, great. That's exactly what I hoped for this show is that we would be groveling at Jeff Bezos's feet by the end of the show. No, so we love the NSF. The NSF is, is where it's at. Listen, I want to say, non-ironically, I love the NSF. I, only ironically do I love Jeff Bezos and Amazon. <laughs> So <laughs> now uh, this is just about the end of our show. Uh, we are coming to the end. So we have to uh, check in on the score. And it looks like Naomi has two points and she is the winner with the most. Emily has zero and she has the least. But that means that Emily, it is called wrong answers only. So Emily, you in fact have won by having the least point. Wow. 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 Josh, the only person who has clearly lost is you by coming in the middle. Next time, do better or worse. Josh, we are disappointed in you. This hurts. Mass. You're an intermediate mass. And that just That's what count. I keep saying myself. But honestly, after this past year, I'm a large. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, right. do you know that the first intermediate mass black hole was only discovered last year? And it was actually a huge deal because until now, it was like the missing black hole mass range. And it was a huge freaking deal. It was like, in physical review letters, in the astrophysical <laughs> journal letters, like it was revolutionary. So I wow. would take that intermediate mass black hole <laughs> status and run. With I will. You are Honestly, the star of the show I'm just, right now. I'm just striving to be the most medium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, before we go, Kiara, uh, will you tell us what the biggest thing that you hope that everyone who is watching takes away about astrophysics or black holes or gravitational waves? What do you hope that they take away? Black holes are fun. They're like, they're fun to study. They're fun to talk about, um, you know, doing physics, at, you know, as, as a professor and at a professional level is really a dream come true for me. And, and I hope that anyone who has, you know, dreams about working on space, in space, on space time things, I hope that they pursue their studies and their careers. And it's going to be freaking rough sometimes, but um, you know, there's light at the other, at the end of the tunnel and, you know, hang in there and, the and black do your hole. best and yeah. work hard. Yeah. In the black hole, there is also light. You just can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell anyone. <laughs> okay, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Kiara. And, and panelists, that is what Kiara hopes that we all take away from today's show. But what will you actually be taking away? Uh, Josh, what will you actually be taking away? That... That you can, if you get too close to a black hole, you could get spaghettified, <laughs> and that's you're stretched way out. And that that sounds like a cartoon premise, but it would hurt so much, <laughs> and I never want to do it. <laughs> Naomi, what, what are you going to take away from today's show? That I'm going to pivot to becoming a science artist, okay? I'm going to be an artist <laughs> of holes, of stars, just maybe spheres in general. <laughs> and that's just really great to find something new after all these years. So thank you, Dr. Yes. Mingarelli. Please. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm <not real. laughs> 
that. I don't know. <laughs> Why are you guys laughing at me? Emily. That was just a bold move. Well, it was. She was saying. yelling at us. She was yelling at us about bump and and I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do it. Emily, what are you going to take away from today's show besides that beautiful pronunciation? (laughs) Well, as the winner of tonight's game, I'm going to take away a large gold trophy and a $100,000 prize. That is 100% (laughs) true. Thank you all so much for playing. Congratulations to Emily. Thank you so much uh, to Kiara. Uh, We are, uh, that was was the show. I'm going to give you a little bit of a spiel about the next one. And that's it. Thank you all so much. Thanks for being here. Um, So tonight, at the end of the night, you are going to get a follow-up email. Everyone who's been watching, there's going to be bonus clips in that email. There's going to be more links to Kiara's work. There's going to be comedy from all three of our comedians, and there's going to be the trivia question that if you answer correctly, we'll get you on next month's Scroll of Glory. Also, uh, that is our show for tonight, but we will be back here next month on June 17th with a whole new episode with a new scientist and new comedian panelists. We have Rob Hayes from Showtime. We have Josh Sharp from HBO and Comedy Central. We have uh, an incredible lineup. It's going to be so great. And the registration link is up now, so you can already register for free tickets to June's show. That is going to be on June 17th. In the meantime, though, thank you so much to our scientist tonight, Chiara Mingarelli. Thank you so much to our panelists, Naomi at Paragon, Emily Heller, and Josh, uh, Josh Gondelman. Thank you as well to everyone at the National Academy of Sciences and LabX and our back end folks. Thank you to uh, Jesse and Amechi and the whole tech team. They made this happen. I am your host, Chris Duffy. This has been Wrong Answers Only. Find out about the show and watch our past episodes and future episodes online at labx.org slash WAO. That link is going to come up right now, and I am going to disappear. Goodbye. Have a great night. <laughs>